This is the number one MCW setup that all the pros and top 250 players are running in the pro league and in model for three ranked play. Which after I give you the build, I'm going to be breaking down Scraps gameplay. He's the number one player in the entire league. So if you want to get better, I would definitely stay tuned for that. So currently I'm only Crim 3, but I think that's, you know, I'm credible enough to be able to give you guys the build and, you know, know what's up with the game. I should be iridescent very soon. I'll upload a gameplay when I do hit the iridescent. So for the first attachment, you kind of want to run this barrel on every single MCW. Keep in mind, this is a pretty similar build. You guys might already even have it. So we are going to be adding the MCW Cyclone Long Barrel. It's just going to maximize that damage range and increase increase the ball velocity the most the main reason we are running this is for that ball velocity when you're playing against very good players there's a lot of engagements that are very close and whoever has the better ball velocity or the better connection will usually win the gunfight basically when you have a very good ball velocity it feels like you're playing on a better ping which is why if you run the midnight bear or the mammoth the game is going to feel a little bit off at times where you feel like you should kill the enemy you won't kill the enemy and so overall just always run the mcw psycho and long barrel why does it feel like i'm lagging 124 ping on my server i swear call of duty is like the laggiest game ever especially after an update so i'm gonna go into cyclosa see if they got any of the good stuff hey brother how can i help you yo i'm looking for something to like improve my connection i'm always lagging i got just the product brother this is the best utility on the market gear up game booster and it's free hmm can i try it out real quick yes brother Let's see what it is now 20 it definitely works this works great but what if i'm on console no worries brother you can purchase our router hyper ev off amazon which will also greatly reduce your in-game pain gear of game booster can also help you avoid svmm so if you always feel like you're fighting against the best i would definitely try out gear up and see how the lobbies are then i've been using gear of game booster a ton to improve the stability on my game and it makes playing a way better experience and so if you want to do a lot better on the game i would definitely go down and download gear up game booster today i'll have a link in the description and a pinned comment so now our gun is going to overall just feel so much better but there's still going to be a lot of recoil on the weapon that being said you guys got two different options previously i would run the precision heavy this one you know a lot of people don't think it's that good because it only gives us aim and idle stability and firing aim and stability but that is actually crucial like that impacts the weapon like the most not so much the aim and idle stability but that firing aim and stability eliminates so much recoil on the weapon but you are a little bit slower you're moving around a little bit slower which is a little bit annoying so that's why a lot of the pros are going to be running the rb clock PSL grip. This one's going to increase the firing aim and stability, that gun kick control, and the recoil control. I feel like there's a little bit less recoil if I run the precision, so if you're not that good, you might want to run the other one, but if you are decent at the game and you want to take advantage of, like, being able to move around the map a little bit quicker, we're still having a lot of recoil control, you're definitely going to want to run the RB claw. So now our gun doesn't have as much recoil. We have a lot more range on the gun, but the mobility is still going to be a little bit weird, and if you're not that good, I'll give you a variation of the build. And I also do have a more of a beginner build if you are in like silver rank or bronze so for the underbarrel we are going to be adding the dr6 hand stop or the x10 phantom when you add the x10 phantom you get that recoil control and you get the mobility but you don't get as much mobility as you would with the dr6 hand stop but with the dr6 you don't get any recoil control which is why i say if you're a little bit better you want to run the dr6 this is what i'm running to hit iridescent and it just allows me to fly around the map and just get my timings a little bit more accurate so as you guys can see we can strafe a little bit quicker as well which will help you activate that rotational aim assist which will just overall give you more aim assist helping you stay on target if you're on keyboard and mouse still is going to help you to strafe and things but we all know you know control is a little bit overpowered so so now we got the range we got the mobility and the recoil control but there still is a little bit of recoil in the weapon it's going to be pretty bouncy making it kind of hard to use at long range that being said you guys got three different options for the muzzles you got the l4 flash hider compensated flash hider which this one is actually banned in the pro league because it's so good this one is kind of like a half suppressor when you fire your gun you're not going to be on the radar as long you get a lot of recoil control with basically having no cons at all i know we're losing bull velocity but you don't really notice it whatsoever when you add the compensated flash hider i don't even know if that value is accurate because it doesn't feel like you're losing any bull velocity what you guys can also run is the blooded break i know i said that wrong this one is very good it's going to be the best one for recoil control so if, again if you're not that good this one's going to make the gun the easiest to use but we are losing damage range and so the gun isn't going to be as good at range but it's only five percent and so for me personally i don't really notice it too much and i've beaten a few pros on rank play and 
I'm almost an iridescent using the bulleted brake. I really like this one. It's my personal favorite. I've seen some pros run it. Another reason I like it is how we have a little bit of a faster ADS speed. So if you're kind of aggressive, you will really like that. L4 flash hider. Yes, it gives you a lot of recoil control. The gun is going to be very easy to use. Uh, you're not going to get as much recoil control as you would with this one, but you're not going to be losing damage range. You're going to be losing a little bit of your ADS speed instead. It doesn't really matter. I recommend using all three and just use the one that you do best with. For me, I really, I really like the blitter, which I see pros and top 250 players run. So next attachment, again, personal preference. Most players do run an optic, and if you don't run an optic, it's actually like, it's banned in the pro league. All the pros were like, okay, you have to run an optic because this gun is too good without an optic. So if you want to be a little bit cheesy and just have your gun be extra OP, I would not run an optic. But even at that point, I just like this gun with an optic. I noticed myself just seeing the enemies and doing a little bit better with an optic. If you don't want to run an optic though, I would run the precision heavy or I would run the Warforce precision stock. Keep in mind, if you do run the precision heavy, you might want to run the DR6 hand stock just to mitigate all the mobility cons that we are getting. Warforce is also very good. I know it doesn't look that good, but that recoil gun kick is really going to make the weapon super easy to control and you get the fire and aiming stability so these two stocks are very good to be adding previously we would add the regal heavy but then they nerfed it in season one so nobody really runs that anymore and then um ammunition obviously banned magazine you don't really need that unless you whiff a lot of shots and you might want to run a 40 but then you're going to lose mobility and so overall you don't really want to run that and that's why all the pros are going to be running the mk3 reflector or the slate reflector you can mix it up and run some other fun sites like the mini tack uh shout out to my boy gabriel on youtube he uses this one i don't really like it but it is a unique fun site and so there's a lot of like fun sites in the game the uh there's another one the jack glasses is also a good one so just run the one you like close the quarters classic reflex this one is great i love this one if you guys take a look that one super clean all the optics are good you just got to use the one that you like the most i like the mk3 reflector so if you guys want a picture of the pro player mcw there you guys go keep in mind majority of the pro players are going to be running the l4 r flash hider but it is all personal preference doesn't really matter then for the rest of the build so i got the infantry vest that's the only one you can run you got the uh, okay not the akimbo i hate how i label this akimbo because it's not akimbo this setup is actually banned in the pro league because in the pro league you're not allowed to run an optic or a muzzle only the um the short barrel and then the eclipse or grip on here just to increase mobility overall that's going to be the best secondary for rank play so i got a couple comments of people asking like why i don't run a knife because last year everyone would run a knife that's because this year the knives are a two hit kill and so they're not as good and the time to kill is so much longer to where you actually need extra ammo a lot of the time so yeah the pistols are very very helpful i have so many kills with the pistol then for the tactical i got the stun grenade smoke grenade is going to be very helpful on search and destroy if you want to do very aggressive plays if you're playing terminal snd you can basically run up through books like right through that library and then break one of the windows and then you can smoke the whole hallway so then you can get into white and get into the b area you can smoke the b bomb you can smoke the um the hallway and that allows you to play aggressive or if you want to go straight over to b you can smoke the b bomb smoke the cross so you can get into there you could even bait people with it you can smoke one side of the map and then go to the other side to make it so the enemies start tweaking and things like that so smokes very good you don't need everyone to run it though i just like the stun so i can stun check areas and just get those easy picks lethal frag is usually going to be the year the one that you want to run on uh on rio since it's a small map and so many close engagements usually i run the semitex and then oh make sure on the frag grenade you always cook it. i see a lot of people just throw in their frag grenade nah you gotta make sure you cook it and before i get all the comments if you want this you gotta get the crash bandicoot bundle for that certain frag grenade it does a cool sound effect and things for the field upgrade i usually run trophy system one thing you can do is run dead silence and then instead of the covert sneakers you can run the lightweight boots so then you can move around a little bit quicker and then use the dead silence to be a little bit uh, quiet and then if you think the enemies have walls typically only like crim and above will have the walls you can just run lightweight boots since they already know where you're going to be at so then you can just move around a little bit quicker and then uh for the gear i usually run the eod sometimes i'll use tack masks in case the enemies are just hitting me with a million nades but usually i mean with the million stuns usually i like eod mag holster you don't ever really need that and then always run the marksman gloves even on your smgs just so you have reduced flinch in case the enemy hits the first shot on you then you're going to have a higher chance to actually win that gunfight and your sights aren't going to sway as much with all that yapping done let's get into the breakdown of scrap ladies and gents this is scrap he plays on toronto ultra he's literally the number one player in the league this guy's accuracy is insane so i'm just gonna kind of explain what he's doing if you like model for three rank play and you're seriously trying to get better stay tuned for this so he instantly goes and gets the high ground that's a big thing on high rise you want to get that high ground just in general every map so you can kind of copy that route he did and if you didn't see what he did basically hopped up on that little edge of the propane motherfuckers already popping off i can't explain what he's already doing because he's just popping off now so Basically, if you want to practice some of those spots that he's going in, you can go to a private match 
and then you can just practice going in there practice doing what he's doing in a private match you could even have this video up go into a private match and just practice the routes he's doing and see if you can get your game to look like his because you know it looks like he's very confident he's got the movement he knows what the enemies are going to be at this is control they're all spawning back here you can get some really insane spawn traps when you get pushed up like this it is very hard to die like it is actually hard to die in this situation especially when you got your teammate over there all the enemies know that they're getting completely trapped so they're going to be going underground oh no it looks like they're still just trying to push out are you fucking kidding me if your teammate Push. Dude, he just got pissed off at KB. So right there, if your teammates don't really get kills, you're not going to get any kills because you need the enemies to spawn in. So when you get to the front, you are really hoping that your teammates can get some kills, which is uh, you know, a little bit iffy. Also, let me know in the comments, what rank are you right now? I'm curious, what's the average rank? Right now, I'm Crim 3, almost iridescent on PC though, which keep in mind, there's only like a lot of people say about, Jesus, oh my God, right there, headshots. When you get a headshot, it lowers the TTK at the time to kill by 100 milliseconds. If you get, Jesus, 20 to 3? That is insane. So if you get a headshot, the chances of you winning the gunfight is drastically higher. Especially when you're, you know, just playing online because everything is all connections. You know, everything's going to a server, to them, back to you. And if you get a headshot, you're going to have a way higher chance of actually winning that gunfight. And then also, like I was saying, uh, I completely forgot. Let's move on. Oh yeah, I'm curious on the rank play. Right now, I'm almost iridescent on PC. If I play on console, it would be a lot easier because there wouldn't be any cheaters. The amount of cheaters I've played against is insane. You're literally looking, watching someone track you through a wall. It's like, really, you're tracking me perfectly through a wall where they completely lock under your head and your teammates and they don't even see you. Just that soft aim stuff. And if you watch this one video, how bad is cheating in Call of Duty? You will be mind blown. It's actually impossible to tell if someone's cheating. Like, you will even be able to tell if I'm cheating. Like, you can get it to that realistic. And so there's a lot of cheaters on here. And people say that about 80 to 90% of all the iridescents are cheating. The pro players say that 200 out of the top 250 are actually cheating. The pro players are saying that. And so, um, yeah, majority of the top players are cheating. And so basically, you know, I'm basically... I've said that word so many times. I'm, I'm up in the top few hundred. It, oh, not yet. Once I hit iridescent, I'm up in the top few hundred. There's not too many players up there. Sorry, I had to toot my horn a little bit, you know. Okay, over here. See, he's getting the high ground again. I played against Scrap before, and he just stayed on the propane the entire game. And it pissed me off because he was just beaming me across the map. And I got completely shit on, given I was on 90 ping. Copy that route. See what he's doing? Go into a private oh match and copy doing that route. He meant to get up on top. If you get up on top there... The enemies aren't going to be able to kill you, and you're going to be able to get a ton of kills. Underground, 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 Dude, this underground, is a complete breakdown. You just want to be able to push up and get them into the spawns. And see how he's saying underground? They know if they don't see anyone there, they're going to be spawning underground. Then they get through, and then they still can pick them off. That was insane. This is a complete breakdown. This is basically how you play high rise control. It's like Albogger Fortress from Modern Warfare 2 rank play, which that rank play... I'm also curious. I'm in the comments, sorry. Which rank play do you like more? Model for 2 rank play or model for 3 rank play? I like model for 2 rank play a little bit more. I think this one's more fun, but the maps are absolutely atrocious. I hate all the maps except for Rio. Invasion's okay on Search and Destroy. Um, we are getting Vista SD. I think we're getting Vista on all the modes and Departures on all the modes to test it out. So we're getting some new maps and rank play. Hopefully they just take out all these maps like fuck high rise and stuff. Horrible map absolute dog shit same with terminal a lot of people like terminal but that's just because um you know you probably haven't played in the top percentage of players when you're up there it is so bland there's no routes it's just like so boring rio on the other hand is super fun rio hardpoint great map and easy to see the enemies like invasion everything's like a fucking brick and tan you're shooting at tan pixels on a tan background okay i'll try to break down what he's doing sorry for all the yaps they're all looking at the kill feed. They see that there's a team kill. Scrap gets two kills. They know there's uh, one guy, you know, only alive forward, and then the other people are in spawn. You always gotta look at kill feed right there. They see three people are dead, so they know that three of them are gonna be spawning. One guy's on the map. They gotta look who's on the map. You gotta memorize your the enemy's names, so then you know who to look for. So if you kill one, two, and three, you know four is gonna be somewhere around the map. And so once you kill the four, then you're like, okay, they're all in spawn. Unless it took a long time to kill four, then you're like, okay, one, two, and three are out of the spawn. We need to get them. Three of them are dead again, so they know they're all going to be in spawn. They don't need to look anywhere else. 
at look at where he's looking. He's looking right at that crack. He's not going to be like you can kind of see deeper into the spawn. Practice these angles that he's doing. I even need to watch more of this if I want to get better. When you're behind this satellite thing, you, like the enemies usually lose aim assist and it's just really awkward. So this is uh, a great spot to be in. One shot, one B street on me. Anyone gonna help me? Or am Usually, I, dead? I just kind of hide on the point though. You don't really like Scrap. He's very good, and he's gonna be always hitting his shots. We might not. I, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm pretty I'm good. If you watch my streams, I beam a lot, but <laughs> sometimes I miss shots, and so usually I just don't really peek out there. I just kind of hide on B and just kind of move around and like watch the cuts into B, so then I don't get picked off. And I try to get my teammates over there, and I just try not to get as much me. time as I can. Oh, it's not me. Also, if you're losing, like, solo queuing and things, just play objective. If you're playing objective... That was totally oh, look at that right. accuracy. That He's almost me. like me. If you no, just play objective, not. you'll be surprised how many more games I've you win. Because if your teammates are just going out and getting I kills and not really playing objective, just go play objective. Huh? See how he's aiming high? He's trying to get that headshot in there. When you get that headshot, way easier to get that kill. There's only going to be three lives, so definitely they're going to be uh, slamming them out. Yeah, damn. This guy's so weird. <laughs> okay, so always do that nade over. See that nade? Always do that nade. Go into a private match. Have your friend go on the other side. Practice always hitting them. You also can, can nade from the other side. You can nade to where P1 is at. Practice doing those. I need to do that. I haven't even hit one. I've hit one nade on P1, but I need to be, able, be better at that. See, watch what he's going to be doing. hes I haven't even seen this, but I know he's going to be up on top three. This is the power position. If someone is up here, it is going to be so hard to take over P1. And so just practice how he's kind of doing it. It is easy to die off it, but also it's easy to get kills on it. No, man. No, I can't. I don't have an excuse. Right there where he just checked to see if he had full screen exclusive or full screen borderless on. That's a PC setting. For me, I usually play on full screen borderless because I'm streaming, but when I turn on full screen exclusive, I notice myself doing a little bit better and I always forget to switch it. Basically, it just makes it so if you're on full screen borderless, you can like tab out real quick and use your mouse without the game closing. If you do full screen exclusive, the game's gonna like close for a second if you want to use your mouse. He knows that wall bang. He knows someone's gonna be laying there, so that's why he's just shooting there to see. Gets the hip marker. He knows to sit there. Teammates already shooting there. If your teammates already not, you can call it out and then boom, you guys can double shoot it. He knows they're going to be up on top. He gets those timings. He knows when the enemies are going to be dying and stuff. So he knows where to look. Some of you guys probably want me to shut the fuck up, but no, nah, I got to speak. See, like he checked those areas. He didn't see anyone. He's like, okay, they're probably bobbing church. Now they're just going to be holding them out. This is an absolute masterclass. What you can also do is have them... Yeah, what they're doing is basically they want them to spawn down there because it's really easy to kill them off that spawn. Now they're going to be going for the rotation. If he was in the pro matches, usually he'd be going for the rotation probably at 20, 30 seconds. Probably like 25 seconds, even 30 seconds. Kind of depends on what's going on in the match. If he spawn close to the next hard point and there's 30 seconds left on old, just go to the next hard point. Just go to the next one. A lot. That's all hard point is. It's all about rotations. You need to get the rotations. If you're losing games and you look back, you probably didn't get the rotations. Dude, are you serious? Bro, why is his neck so tall? Jesus. I got it, boys. Don't worry. See right there? That one's really playing objective. So he's like, okay, I'll play objective. So we, we win this match. Now he's just trolling. He's <laughs> just fucking trolling. What happened? Seriously though, if you haven't Get stopped on. by my streams on YouTube, stop by them. I stream almost every day at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard. Playing ranked play, we're right about to hit Eerie. I was stuck in Crim 1 for a while, and then I just stopped playing with my Eerie friends, and then it was fine. Because all the Eeries, like most of them are cheating in there, and it's just blatant walls, just blatant hacks, and there's just they know they're not going to get banned, so they just blatantly do it. And so I just don't play with Eeries anymore. Once I'm Eerie, I don't mind playing against hackers and things, but I need to hit Eerie first, and so I just literally don't play with my Eerie friends. Or I make sure they're not on the Eerie accounts. Some people would say I got carried too. Absolutely not. You need it. Oh my god. You need a good team to do good. You can't solo queue up here. So don't trash talk someone for having a good team when they're playing in here. Because if you want to hit Eerie, you need a team that also is in Eerie rank. Typically. You need a team that knows what they're doing. I can solo queue up to Krim. Diamond's easy solo queue for me. Just because, you know, it's my job to play this game. But after Diamond, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's very rough. It takes a long time. And because if you want to get a lot of SR, you need to be slamming the enemy team. Like, you need to win, like, 
250.100 and that's how you'll start getting a lot of sr like right now in crim i'm getting about 70 sr per win so it's not going to take too long but if i start getting games where i'm getting like i mean if i start not really beating the enemies that badly then i'm going to start getting like 20 and 30 which still happens sometimes so it's all about destroying the enemy team and the higher you are on the leaderboard the more sr you'll get right here it looks like they're getting broken down a little bit the enemies might actually be able to get the lead they do need to get someone up in P1. Big trade, big trade on daily. One shot. Damn it. Honestly, I would have won that. So one of the enemies... Oh, inside has three? Jesus. Maybe. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Tori said oh, scoreboard check. <laughs> Embarrassing. Top right, last one. Can't believe that guy's late on the stairs. Inside, just so you guys know, is a pro player. Bottom right, right now. Which these guys play against... Okay, these guys are so good. They play against hackers and they beat them. For me, it's kind of difficult to beat hackers. Or I beat... Oh, that was crazy. I beat a lot of hackers. I beat uh, actually a ton of hackers. But pro players are so good to where they can beat basically every hacker. Jesus. The enemies can be like... Spin Yo, Parker, if you could do that in my gameplay, that would be so sick. <laughs> But uh, what the pro players do is that they, they're they so good that they can beat people with blatant walls and aimbot, which is just insane. Like in one of my breakdowns I did, I was showing how Dashy beat a team of hackers. Play. Fucking crazy how good they are. Because you should be able to know where the enemies are at. If you want to get very good at the game, watch this one YouTuber, Harz. H-A-R-R-Z. I'll probably have him pinned in the comments or in there. Oh, Look him up. That guy, if you watch those videos, you'll get good at the game. Like, if you don't know five, spawns and rotate... How does he have seven? Seven? That's insane. But uh, if you watch, like, pro players play... I don't know. If you, if you watch those horror videos, you'll learn spawns. If you don't know spawns... If you don't kill an enemy and know where the enemies are going to be spawning based off where you kill them, where your teammates are... That's like playing, you know, a game without instructions. You got to have the instructions. Knowing the spawns is the instructions. And people don't even realize that you can pinpoint exactly where the enemies are basically going to be spawning. And that's another reason why people hate invasions, is that the spawns are very hard to read. That's a big skill in Call of Duty is knowing spawns. And people are like, oh, spawn trapping, that's not skill. Nah, it's skill because you know exactly where they're going to be spawning. And you know how to get them into that spawn trap. If you if you don't know how to get them in spawn trap, you know, you got to you gotta work on your spawns. Bro, Insight's having a bad game. Oh, my God. Yo, if you haven't already and you enjoy these videos and you want me to do more of them, leave a like. Subscribe with the noties on. We're going to be going crazy next year. I can't wait for the next Call of Duty. Still going crazy this year, but next year is when we really turn it up. Got more people on the team and everything. Double uploads every day. Warzone videos. Oh, I do have a Warzone channel. More Seabass. Look it up. We have a lot of videos on there unlisted, not public yet. We're just trying to get like a bank of like a bunch of videos. So then it's easier to be consistent. Right there, you won that because of the headshot. Always kill Horan. Supposedly though, after about 30 meters, the headshot doesn't matter. I don't know if that's just, just talking out of his, his ass, though, because sometimes they just say random things that don't even make sense. Right there, that's a hop-up. If you watch Lunchtime, watch lunch Lunchtime's breakdown on sub-base, Karachi, Invasion. There's a lot of hop-ups that you can do. And then go uh, yeah, go into like a game, like a private match, and actually do those. Because if you don't do those, you're not going to like remember to do them in-game. You need to build up the muscle memory of getting into those little cheese spots and doing those hop-ups and things. Basically, the recap of this, watch Harz, H-A-R-R-Z on YouTube to learn all the spawns and the rotations and things like that. And then watch Lunchtime for the same reason and to get all the cheese spots. If you do those two things and you learn everything in those videos, that's when you'll start ranking up. That's when you put the extra time in. You can get a lot better by not even playing the game. But if you're hard stuck and you really, truly, actually want to get out, you're going to watch those videos. If you don't watch Lunchtime and Harz, you're not going to... and I, I'm good, but they specialize in that stuff. So basically, if you don't watch them, you're not going to get better. That means you truly don't really want to get better. Or you want to get better the lazy way. Which, you won't get better like that. Just playing the game is how you get good, uh, you know, accuracy and just getting good timings and getting good reps and things. Because you got to apply what you learn into in-game. And that's like the, 
once you get the combination, that's when you're really good. If, also, oh, if you want to get really good aim, play against what bots. Get a bunch of kills against bots and don't stop playing against bots until you have perfect aim. You shouldn't be missing any shots. When you're playing this, you shouldn't miss a single shot. When I'm playing against Eeries, if I miss a single shot, I'm done. I'm dead. I You cannot afford to miss a single bullet up in the top ranks. But that is going to wrap it up for everything. He went 31-13. Let me know another player if you want me to react to and things like that. But I hope you guys did enjoy and deuces.